Hey guys, welcome back to The Coven. I am Mana, and today we're going to do something really super fun. This is gonna be the first episode of our spooky hotel challenge. All right, so let's hop into the rules of this challenge. So as you can see, we are in Canva where I created this infographic for myself so I don't forget any of the rules for this challenge. So let's read it. Um, this first section here is the original rules. I don't follow too much of the scoring bit. I'm not. I'm not gonna follow the scoring. I'm not. I don't like to keep score. It's just not my thing. So let's read this a bit. Um, this was created by Mischievous on the mod The Sims forum. So um, I needed to make one owner sim, male or female. I made a male, and my maid was is a female and i'm going to be giving them 20,000 simoleons the original rules said a thousand but this was created back in 2015 and things just are a little bit different now so i thought give them the original 20 grand might cover my mortgage for a couple times maybe i made a really expensive house now we're open for business and we can take in some guests. There's only two ways that we can get guests. And essentially they are the same thing. You meet a sim outside of your home in your home neighborhood, no loading screens. You can't go off your, your neighborhood so that you get a loading screen. It becomes apparent why in a little bit. So, then you can bring them in and then you lock the front door on them. The moment they get in your house, we need to spin the wheel to decide which room we're going to be giving them. That room determines how their stay is going to go. It's a little more organic once we get going. Now, don't forget that we can't leave our lot. Um, only one guest per room. And we cannot, um, I don't have to fill up all the rooms every single night. Our check-in time ends at 6 p.m., so anytime after that, I cannot bring in more guests off the street. Things will get kind of confusing if I constantly am out trying to bring everyone in at odd hours of the day or night. So I've set myself a strict check-in time. And then check out is 11 a.m. So that will get into the daily rules kind of thing. And we'll get to that in a little bit. Now the rate scale, um, I am a luxury suite. It actually, our build is a former Gothic Victorian home turned into a bed and breakfast. Mine is a mid range hotel. So I get a hundred simoleons per guest. How we use this rate scale is um, the example that was given is if you have seven guests stay at your mid-range hotel overnight, um, you would multiply seven number of guests by 100, which is the room rate, and then enter this enter the cheat uh, of what that number is. And then scoring. I'm not going to be keeping score, but if you want to use my infographic and do want to score, I did leave it in here and add it if you so want to use it. Now the Sims 4 challenge rules. So I need to assign a number for each room in the hotel, starting with the number one. Um, for each guest, you must randomize an event, our daily event. This must be done every Sims day that they stay at your hotel at check-in. The daily events are as follows. The owner needs to make friends with the guest. The owner makes enemies with the guest. Now with this those two rules, normal rules apply, so they're locked in their rooms. They don't get any special treatment. They get regular meals. Yeah, <laughs> there, there's no extra risk involved unless they die of embarrassment or, you know, emotional death could occur. Now, number three, the owner or the maid need to woohoo with the guest. So I'll need to spin the wheel beforehand if, if we can do a risky woohoo. Now, if the maid gets pregnant, we're keeping all the babies. There is a bit of a bonus thing at the end. So we'll, I'll save that little secret till the end. Number four, the guest has free range of the hotel amenities, except the dungeon, the maid's room in the kitchen. The maid's room has 
all the creature comforts for the maid. The kitchen, well, it's the kitchen. They can't just make themselves food. The maid will provide food for them. But they must retire to their assigned room by 12 a.m. or else. I haven't decided what our or else punishment will be, but maybe we'll make it on the fly. Now, number five, this is the five star treatment. We will be giving the guest the best room and serve the guests excellent quality food. And we'll make sure that their needs are all being met. We'll go play some games with them or we'll dance with them or, you know, we'll try our best to woo them and they can go anywhere in our facilities. So they have access to our graveyard and they will have access to our very treacherous garden everywhere in the hotel grounds. Now, they also must retire by 12 a.m. or else. Again, I don't know what that or else is, but we'll come up with something, I'm sure. If you can think of something that is really great for our or else punishment, leave me a comment down below. I would love to hear your devious answers. Now, number six is the saunas are relaxing, but can turn deadly with a turn of a key. Spin the wheel. Now, odd the door remains open and they can come and go. Even the door gets locked and they're stuck in there when they may die of heat stroke. Oh darn. Number seven is the dungeon for you. Place in the dungeon. Spin the wheel to determine which room. Um, will they survive? Who knows? I have a few different dungeon rooms that aren't counted in my regular rooms. They each have a theme. Okay, number eight is the one-star treatment. We ignore the guest's motives. Um, we give them the worst bed and delete everything else, including the toilet. We really want them to suffer here. And we will f feed them spoiled food, and we will lock them into their room for the duration of their stay. No checking in on them. We don't check in on them. Number nine, we're going to give them access to the pool and the piranha pond. I know that the piranha, that I that doesn't look quite right. I will fix my spelling mistake. Now, number 10 is kill the guest any way I want. They just can't survive. They can't survive the night. They can't survive this day. They can instantly be killed at daybreak. After the night is over, we're going to spin the wheel for guests that are still alive. If it falls on odd, the guest must stay another night. Even the guest can check out and leave the lot. Each morning, count up the total number of guests that are still alive and multiply by the predetermined room rate. And all graves then must go to the graveyard. Now we get to the bonus stuff. When the mortgage is going to take all your hard earned simoleons, or the repo man is going to come and take some stuff, uh, your maid must have a bake sale. Food poisoning is encouraged, but not necessary. If by chance the food ends up killing a person, you can add $1,000 per death. We can also have just a, like a selling table and sell some death flower arrangements or something like that. Puffer fish, we'll have to, we'll have to get some puffer fish. Our another bonus thing is we get a thousand simoleons in a one-time payment for befriending the Grim with either the hotel owner or the maid. Both can do it, but you only get 1,000, the initial person that gets the friendship. Also a $1,000 simoleon one-time payment if the maid has Grim's baby. And to finish this challenge, we're going to keep playing this until the hotel owner dies of old age. And if you're keeping score, you can add up your score after he dies. If the maid dies, I guess we're screwed. <laughs> we can maybe recruit a, a former guest if we, if we need to. <laughs> but let's hop into this and check out the house. Okay, so this is our house and as you can see we have a graveyard over here and it is three levels and then there's a basement 
and a bit of a special bonus room that probably won't come into play, not even for a little bit. Let's check this out. So here's our top down view. I forgot to put the roof on my, my thing. All right, I'll do that in a little minute. Is our little bonus room that will never probably get used. As you can see, it is a place for vampires that is only accessible if they turn into a bat and fly up here. Or witches if they if they fly up here. I will change this out if if it turns into a witch. Here is the bargain version of the rooms. Here's my Killian. Killian is sitting on my uh, mechanical beds there. I, I can't I can't remember. My brain is having a brain freeze moment. Murphy beds. Oh, my goodness. Killian is there sitting on one of the Murphy beds that hopefully will kill a couple Sims malfunction or something. And they're just basic, basic rooms. I got some single beds in a few, but mostly they are Murphy beds um, and super small bathrooms with a shower and tiny living stuff. Now, this is a little more of a luxury room. So this is our best room here in the in the house. Um, it it's got a balcony. It's got a really nice bed. It's got a big TV and a fireplace. I can add like a bookshelf or something if or books or something if they get the five star treatment. Now, this is the next best room. I thought that was really cool with the round part here. And then, of course, they this nice luxury room has the nice jacuzzi tub. This one has a nice big bathroom as well. Um, there is liquid courage in the corner. This one is really cool. It's got the corner couch and this one as well. And it's the same bathrooms. And then the main level, this is the maid's room. This is Belladonna's room. That's what our maid's called. And then here is our kitchen. We have all the amenities to keep our guests well fed. Now, this is our dining room. I'm thinking that we should make it a rule that all guests, regardless of what their rooms are, have to come down and have supper with us just once every night. Now, this is the dance floor. Everybody can dance around, have some great time. This is the entertainment room. This is our garden room. I am, I've got a few cow plants that got to go in here. I got to do that. Then we got like a hot springs. I mean, this is the piranha pond. Um, I've got two cow plants growing here, ready to chew on my, on our guests. And we have the wishing well, and I have an alley here of torturous. They're not going to die of junk food, but maybe one of these things will fall over on them. Maybe you never know. And, um, I, I have chickens. But the trick is, is that they're evil chickens. So don't tick off the evil chickens. Now, here is my pool. My pool is kind of pooky and gross. And I, I need to be able to lock it so they can they can uh, drown in there if I have to. I might have to add that as a roll, rollable thing. Might have to edit my rules there if they are allowed to go in the pool. They can also get, uh, you know, locked in the pool. Now, this is our graveyard, all the graves. This is our pet cemetery in the corner here. This is just our cults. So we've got werewolves and spellcasters. We have servos in the front. We have aliens here. Um, we have vampires here. We have our Mount Como rabies. I have a gnome. This is where I'm going to put um, our our um, human guests that stay. We'll replace the de the debug stones with regular real headstones. Um, mermaids don't have proper headstones, so I made this as a monument to our beloved mermaids who don't get the option to you know headstones, which I find very stupid. This is locked to the public so the public cannot get in this way it it just it's rusted shut we're we don't allow that we don't like that 
It's our family graveyard. But anyway, so yeah, let's get started and see if we can get a few uh, guests for the evening. <laughs> 